In my younger day, there was a man named Kirk Gowdy, and his theme was the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat. Well, this week, we're gonna be doing it in reverse. The agony of defeat becomes a thrill of victory. Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. This week, we're in Algoma country, staying at Big Basswood Lake Resort. Our quarry, smallmouth, but huge smallmouth. Stay with us, we'll be right back. That's that a beautiful too. one. Check out this beautiful smallmouth. That is what you're in for on this episode of the new Fly Fisher. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario. Algoma Country. Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. There is a region in Algoma country near Thessalon, Ontario that has world-class fishing and is a very affordable trip for most anglers. It's a drive to location just off the Trans-Canada Highway and has been aptly named Trophy Alley. Why? Because the smallmouth here are immense. There's another bonus. Bass season is open year round. This means you can be on the water shortly after ice out when the fish are hungry and cruising in the shallows. We are staying at Big Basswood Lake Resort a family-owned and operated seasonal trailer park on Big Basswood Lake. It's located one hour east of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. The resort has 28 service trailer sites and four cabins that are rented out weekly. We booked in the off-season, which is the springtime, when cabins are readily available. The cabins are clean, comfortable and warm. Our cabin was equipped with three bedrooms, one queen, one double, and twin bunks, and a fully equipped kitchen, living room, and three-piece bathroom. Looking out from the cabin to the lake in the morning light is a stunning and tranquil view. Algoma country truly is beautiful. Big Basswood Lake is a very deep body of water, and because we came so early in the season, the smallmouth had not yet moved into the shallows due to cold water temperatures. If we had come a few weeks later, then we definitely would be fishing this lake, as it's famous for its big smallmouth and also lake trout. I'm joined on this trip by my good friend and producer of the new fly fisher, Colin McEwen. We both love catching big early season bass. It's early May, and the ice has been off the lake for just about a week or so. I traveled in from Hamilton, Ontario, and Colin traveled from Ottawa, Ontario. It took us both about the same amount of time, which was seven hours, to reach our destination. Now it's really important at this time of year, we only have a, a 14 foot aluminum going into this lake. It's important to plan how you're gonna load the boat. Colin has planned it out. Uh, we're on a small lake, so coming back to the truck won't be an issue if we need to come back for more equipment. So we're leaving the extra stuff in the truck taking our essentials into in the boat with us and that way you're not tripping over everything and it and makes fishing much much easier because we we're visiting just after ice out water temperature is paramount bring a thermometer with you we're looking for water in the 55 to 60 degree Fahrenheit area or 12 to 16 degrees Celsius. We fished back bays and shorelines that had solid rock with them. The rock will warm in the sun and in turn warm the water. The shallow bays are the first to warm up in the spring. This will attract bait fish and thus bring in the bass.
At this time of year, you can see we got a small front coming through. We don't expect a lot of rain from it, but it could hit you. Have warm clothes. You can run into snow at this time of year, but you can run into hot temperatures too at this time of year. You never know. Bring everything with you. It's more important to, you, you can take clothes off if you get too warm, but trying to get warm, put more clothes on and you don't have them, you're, you're out of luck. So Bill, what I'm seeing is that I can, the depth I can see my fly is about two feet. And this is a really clear lake. So uh, locals here told me that the ice came off a little over a week ago. I'm speculating that with the winds they had this past week, the lake probably turned over. Yeah. And that happens in the spring and it happens in the fall. Yep. And um, we'll have a look at why that's important because that doesn't mean the fishing will be good. It might slow down a bit. But the one thing I will say is that you have to slow your uh, presentation down and you might even want to go to like dark colors in the um, darker water with the debris in it just so you, the fish can see your fly. At this time of year, we're uh, running and gunning, we call it, is stop, take a few casts, nothing happens, we move on. It's only trying to find them because at this time of year, they're not set up on any structure. They're still in school form from the fall when they, they school up. So you'll find four or five in a, in a school at a time. And that's what we're looking for right now. Uh, the water's a little stained here. I think we're gonna head over there and see if we can find some clear water. But uh, I think eventually we'll find something. But uh, what you got to do is run and gun at this time of year just to find them. Ooh, I just, I don't know if that was hit or not. <laughs> we ran into cold weather when we first arrived and the fishing was really tough. We fished all the places we thought the fish would be, but we couldn't find warm enough water. Also adding to our problem, was the wind was picking up and we had a long ride back to the ramp. So we decided to try another lake. So Bill and I have now moved to another lake. It was not that far, half an hour away. And uh, this lake is shallower. It's, uh, I think it's 15 feet at the deepest. It's got pike and smallmouth bass in it. And we went down to launch the boat at the public launch and at uh, water temperature was five degrees warmer, at least five degrees warmer than the last lake. So it's got a dark bottom, so it's gonna warm up quicker. And it just, I know this lake has a lot of weeds in it. It's got pike in it. It's got some very big bass. And we can just figure out where they are because uh, that would probably put the water temperature on mid fifties. We're gonna, we're gonna hit some big bass, okay. Ready to go, Bill? Stop, pull here. Go ahead, put it down. Fish? A bass or pike? I don't know. Let's hope it's, it's bass. That's on the crayfish? That's a bass, I can see it. Yeah. Good job, Bill. Yeah, all it was was a little slowdown, and I set the hook. What we have found is warmer water, and that's what you need to do at this time of year. Try to find warmer water. You bring them over this way, oh, Bill. And he oh, let go. he let go. Oh, well, but we just got here, and this lake is five degrees warmer than the last lake we were at. The last lake, there was no activity at all, and this is like my third or fourth, fourth cat, so. Well, that, that, hopefully that's uh, signs to come. I think so, Bill. That's too bad you lost it, Bill. That's a good sized bass. That's yeah. a three, three pounder anyways. Yep. So how do you strike? Just fell the weight? Just fell the weight, yeah.
Today, to say the least, was disappointing. We tried all our tricks with no positive results, other than one lost fish. So, we're going to return to the cabin, have a cold adult beverage, and plan tomorrow's fishing. Beginning of day two, and last night, Colin and I, while we were having an adult beverage and watching the hockey game, we discussed our plan for today. And it, it the, this lake being warmer, we're trying to hit all levels of the water. So I have a, a crayfish pattern on, and I'm dragging the bottom. Colin has a popper with a dropper behind it. Uh, trying to, to entice them out of the wood in the shallow. So uh, this is a really neat technique that uh, the saltwater guys have known for years. Something to attract the, 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 the sound of the popper, get the fish to look up. Then they see your, your offering of either a nymph or, or a small uh, minnow pattern. That's, uh, that's the way we've started today and hopefully it works. After changing flies numerous times with no success, Colin stated we need to find deep water adjacent to shallow water. He had experience on this lake before and knew just where to take us. Fish. I told you. Out there, Bill. Good oh, job, he Bill. Let, he let go. Oh. But that was it. It just stopped. Okay. We got sand to deep water. Right out here, I, I just had a fish on. And what we, Colin said, back here where the structure was, he doesn't think they're there. He thinks they're out here in the deeper area. Right where you can see with my polarized lens or uh, glasses right now, I can see a mud bottom, bottom here where it deepens out and goes dark water, right at the edge of the dark water. That's where I hit that fish, so I'll, I'll try that again. I just hooked the fish, I lost it right away. Now, I might have made a mistake hook in setting the hook, but uh, generally, I, I check my, my hook, make sure it's sharp. So with hook hone, I'm gonna double check. So all it is is a little slot here on the hone. Put the hook in it, rub it up and down a few few times. And it doesn't take much, right, right there. That's really sharp now. These can be bought most tackle stores or fly shops. It's got a hook hone, it's got a knot tool on it and nippers. It's a candy little little tool. Any hits we were having were short grabs. This tells us that the bass still weren't comfortable and their metabolism had not kicked in yet. After all, it was only a week earlier there was ice on the lake. You know, we're just not finding them really in any kind of concentration though. But that could be any day. Uh, it's That's a fish. acting like a fish, Bill. It's a fish. Okay. Let it take line. Let it take line. Oh yeah, Let it take line. Let it take line. Man, oh man, hit like a ton. Oh, and it's going straight down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If that's a bass. It's a good bass. If it's a bass, it's a good bass. But uh, I don't know. It might be Mister Stinky. What you think? <laughs> Could be a pike. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's the little guy. See him. You get him? Just an, oh, already came out, already came out. So just, just let him go here. There it goes. Now I had a hit and it, pike don't miss generally. And when they take these flies, that's why you sometimes get a hit, feel the weight and then it's gone. You come back and no fly. That's what it is. So, all right, Bill, shall we continue? Yep. We started catching pike, which is often a sign that the bass have gone deeper. We decided to return to the cabin early and plan tomorrow's fishing. Well, it's the end of day two. 
And as our resident still water expert, Phil Rowley would say, we're fly fishing failures. <laughs> but <don't> <laughs> what is this? Yes, that's why. Banana in the boat. Can you believe that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> not me. I did not eat it. <laughs> At any rate, we're not giving up. We're here for a couple more days and we will find them. Uh, we have not seen any activity of the fish setting up yet. So that could happen anytime. The water temperature is the right temperature. It's just a matter of time before they start coming around. We're gonna start with talking about the rods and reels that we used on this trip. Uh, for the most part, a nine foot number six weight will work. It works good for us. Um, you know, we're not going down terribly deep, so you don't need anything heavier to, to set the hook when they're down deep. So we're in, you know, three feet to six feet of water most of the time. Now the reel, I would have one with a good drag simply because you can run into a big fish. Now we're going to talk about lines. What's on this reel right, right now is a full intermediate camouflage line. Uh, camouflage means it's clear, it's, it's inky like the, the, the color of the water, really matches the color of the water nicely, and it's supposed to be virtually uh, invisible. They, you just want to be as stealthy as you can, and I find with a, a camouflage uh, intermediate line works the best. But I do have a floating line. The taper of, of, of most trout lines don't handle the larger flies that you're fishing with on bass very well. They have a bass taper which turns them over much easier and you get a longer cast out of it. So a bass tapered uh, dry line. We also have, this one here was quite neat. This, this is a, a floating line for the most part, but it's got 12 feet of intermediate line on it. So it's like a sinking tip, but it's an intermediate. It's not, it's not a full sinking tip. It's an intermediate tip. That worked pretty good for me. And cover all your bases because you don't know if you're going to run into when the fish are gone deep. If you get up here and it's been a particularly cold spring, the fish will be down deep. So you want a good full sinking line to get down to where they are. Uh, that's only happened rarely to us. Most times we're in the intermediate line area, but we always bring a full sinking line. You never know when you're gonna need it. So that's your lines in a nutshell. For our third day of fishing, it's cooler and overcast with a forecast of mixed weather. We've changed locations to yet another local lake, searching for warm water in the shallows to bring in the smallmouth. So right now we've got the anchor, just using one anchor, might have to go to two if this wind comes up. We're on top of a flat and this is the ledge. So right now we're in about six, seven feet and it drops down to about 15, 20 over here. And I think they're coming up on the flat, but they're also cruising the edges. We'll have to experiment a bit and we're using intermediate lines with weighted flies and really slow pulls, the odd little twitch, because I don't think they're gonna chase. Fish. Fish? Yep. All right. I thought it was... Just like a, a stop, was it, or? Yeah, and I thought it was bottom. Give a little pull, I thought, oh, I've got weed. I'm gonna put this on the reel. And then uh, felt the weight move, which is typical for this time of the year. Yeah. They're not going to hammer real hard. I don't know what it is. Well, we'll find out in a second. I think it's a bass. It's a big bass. Oh, it's a nice one, Bill. So I was doing real oh, slow. Look, look, look at how it's got you bent stripping. over. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, very slow retrieve, right? Yeah, very slow. 
And he took this Scotty McFly, which looks like a smelt, which is what they're looking for. And he was probably... Oh, man. Oh, wow. It's giving me a great fight. You're not, you're not, it's still green. Oh, man. Oh, it's a big one. It's a, it's a nice fish. Nice way to start the day. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh man, oh, look oh, at that. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Colin. That's a slab, eh? Oh, that's a real slab. Nice way to start the day. Yeah. Let's reach in here. Flies look out. Look at that. What a nice start to the day. I'm telling you. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm gonna just drop him in, cause he's gonna go right away. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. First fish of the day. First fish of the day, slow, slow, slow retrieve. Uh, the water's just warmed up enough for them to start getting active and they're not in a chasing mood. So you gotta put it in front of them and slow retrieve and they'll, they'll hit it. It wasn't that long that you were uh, fishing, was it? First cast. <laughs> Oh, that might be the kiss of death. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, too. <laughs> You've heard it mentioned many times on the new Fly Fisher about the importance of fishing a land point. This aerial shot shows how it will continue underwater. Bass are naturally attracted to this structure. They can feel safe in deep water and move quickly into shallow water to feed on the bait fish. Never pass up a land point when trying to locate bass. The weather changed again with light rain and cold winds, diminishing our hopes for finding active smallmouth bass. But we did carry on searching. Definitely tough conditions for early season smallmouth bass fishing. Fish. I know I'm going to have to retire. Man, good man. Yep. Oh. Woohoo! Good man. Oh, I don't know what it is. It's the end of the day. We've had every kind of weather, typical for the spring, and uh, I'm willing to bet you it's either a good bass or it's a pike. And I think it is a pike. Look at that. Anyway, it's the end of the day. Uh, Bill and I have had a great day. We've had some challenges, lost some fish, caught some fish, but tomorrow's supposed to be beautiful and sunny. We're gonna go home. Back to our place, get changed, go out for dinner, have a nice meal, get up in the morning, and it's gonna be a whole new perspective. Got another one? Yes. All right, Bill. Oh, and he let go. I got this one. It's bass. I see him. Oh. oh. What is going on? They're short striking, aren't they, Colin? They are. They're short striking. So we're not getting a good purchase. Maybe, uh, maybe we should give them a little bit longer to eat it, or what do you know. think? So we've had four fish on. We're just out and about eight feet of water here going up into a flat on a point. And this is where I expect they'll be, coming in to feed. And getting set up for the spawn when it happens. But Bill and I, I mean, we found fish, but now it's <laughs> keeping them on the hook. It's keeping them pinned. Oh, may have been a hit, or might have been bottom, I don't know. Got him, got this one, come on. That one I got. You got that one? Yeah, right at the boat. I saw him come up, hit it. Ooh. So we moved on the lake. 
And uh, tell you what, Bill, hand me the net. I got them right here at the end. Okay. I think I can get them myself. Okay. And this is the key. Look at that. I love the colors. That's on a big one. The other one I had on, I saw him flush. It was a big fish. But this time of year, look how light colored they are. Because the ice only came off just a little over a week ago. That's why they're so light and they'll go darker as the season goes on. Look at the red eye. Again, that's when they're getting ready to spawn. I'm just gonna quickly let this guy go. Okay. Just needed that sun. We decided to check the water temperature and sure enough, it had risen to 56 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. With the sun finally out, water temperature should get even warmer. This should be a great day. Fish on. Oh, and then let go. Okay. They're really striking short. I'm gonna have to give it a little longer for to take it down a little farther. I'm, I'm feeling the resistance and I'm setting a hook, but I must be only getting just on the edge of his mouth. They're really short taking today, but I, I really believe as the day goes on and the water warms up a little bit, they'll become more aggressive. But we've, we've finally found them after four days of rain and we got a nice day. This back bay is warming up nicely. We got a sand flat there that's that that eventually will be spawning grounds, but we got deep water right here. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for shallow water that drops off the deep water quickly, and that's where the fish will be. Fish. Give it a pull, pull. Oh, I did. Oh, I got a double hard. Oh, I lost mine. And I lifted up. Oh, that's a nice one, Bill. Oh, nice jump. Yep. Look how chunky they are. And this is why you need 10 pound at least. Keep it up. Yeah, you got to have heavier. They're not leader shy at all. Not at all. Look at that. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's staying down. Look at the bend in the rod. My goodness. Okay, drive his head up this way when you can, Bill. Yeah. A little more. Getting close. Come this way. Got him. Yes, oh, sir. Oh, Bill. Yes, sir. That's a nice four pounder at least. <laughs> Three and a half, four. <laughs> Look at that. It, it has been a dry spell for Billy, but maybe, maybe the jinx is off of me. <laughs> I think that's a female. She's got it uh, under yeah. the belly. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's definitely a female. Well, <laughs> the smell of skunk is off me right now. I am thrilled to death. <laughs> I have to take my hat off to Colin. He's putting on a real bass catching clinic. He can't keep them off his line. This is the great thing about fishing early spring in this area of Algoma country. Now, a common mistake that's made by a lot of anglers is that this time of year, they want to fish close to the shore. Uh, the fish aren't there right now. This, this is just after ice out. They're in deeper water and they're feeding heavily. They're not coming in to shore at all. They're feeding on uh, whatever uh, bait fish is, is in the lake, they're, they're feeding out here. So what I'm doing, if you can see the, the shallows there, and I'm in the dark, I'm fishing parallel to the shallows, trying to keep it in, in the dark, deep water, and it's proven successful for both of us. Fish on. All right, Bill. Give him a strip. He, 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 yeah, he hit it once, and then it just slowed it down a bit, and then he come back and ate it again. Yeah, another good fish. Okay. 
keeping a tight line on them. Wow. Well, this this is a good fish. It's another really nice fish. Yeah, that's a big good fish. Good man. Bill, Bill, that's the biggest fish of the day, I think, so I far. Think so far, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Colin, this is, my goodness. Now, I'm going to discuss something a little, just after we release this fish that Colin noticed I was doing, and it was, it was plaguing me for the last two days. But I think he's absolutely right about it. But that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh. Now, as I cast out here, Colin noticed something that I was doing. I, I was having trouble hooking and keeping the, the fish on. And he said, he said, Bill, you're strip setting, but you're, you're setting sideways. And I went, well, maybe he's right. Well, today I've made sure, and I'll get it out for you. This is what I did, and it's made all the difference in the world. I'll be stripping in, I'll feel it, I'll feel it tighten, I pull back, and I lift up. That's made all the difference in the world. Uh, I'm hooking them right where I should be, top dead center. Everything is great. So uh, sometimes you get sloppy, even if you've got all the experience in the world, you get sloppy. And that's what happened with me. There you go. That feels like a bass. Bass, bass this time? Yeah, it's a bass. I think it's the smallest one we've caught. Look at that. Still fights really well. A little bass like that. He's a little bigger than I thought. He's not long, he's just really fat. So you can tell by their size, you know, this is after ice out and look how big they are. They're pretty healthy fish. There you go. All right, Thanks, Bill. So this is a short one that's very beefy. It pops right out. That's the smallest one we've caught here. The colors on that. I love that. There we go. Fish. Good man. Oh, look at that. Look at that six weight. Just bend it. Can you be your own net man? I can. You keep fishing. Oh, that. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, it's a good fish. And it, what a difference, because through the week, generally, when we, when we got into fish, it was very subtle takes. It was rare there was a hard hit. These are generally harder hits, but some of them, as Bill said, they're shorter takes. Oh, look at that. That's a nice fish. Look at that bass. <laughs> good one. Look at that. That is a big fish. Oh, that's why you want a long handle net. Right there. Right at the boat. Right at the boat. He followed it along. Nice. Don't give up when they if, if they strike and they miss, don't give up. Yeah, it's not as big a fish as the last one, but I felt it hit, and I rather than panic and lift the rod out of the water, I just left it where it was and started stripping in again, and he grabbed it. And there we go. When you're patient and willing to put the time in during this early spring, you can get rewarded with excellent fishing. In my 50 years of fishing experience, I'd be hard pressed to think of a better day bass fishing than today. We moved down the lake to a large flat area and it didn't take more than a couple of casts and we were into a good sized smallmouth. And 
We even caught a surprise species. Better get him on the reel, that's for sure. Yeah, he's a big fish. I thought it was a pike. He was here in about 10 feet of water, just coming out. There's an inflow, but a cameraman saw it, and he thinks it's a lake trout. Look at it. That's acting like a lake trout. Yeah, it's staring down like a lake trout. And it's, uh, it's a good size lake trout, too. Okay, I got him on the reel. It is a lake trout. <laughs> Just, and he's cruising the same place as the bass are. Wow. On a six weight rod. And this is when you want to make sure you're using good leader and tippet. Wow. That's fighting like a lake trout. It's a dogging. It's a good thing we don't have the anchor down right now. We we're just yeah. drifting. Look at that. Oh, it is a, it's definitely a lake trout. It's a big lake trout. It's a, oh. This is why you want to come to Algoma a week or two after ice out, because not only can you catch the big bass we're catching, the pre-spawn, and you'll catch pike, but you can have the added bonus of catching lake trout. Okay, let me get the head up. Oh, my God. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Colin! <laughs> Okay. That was completely unexpected. No. Completely. And I was just off a sandbar yeah. near flats where I was casting for bass. Yeah. And I catch, I, got it. I don't know, that's an eight pound, 10 pound lake trout. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm pretty happy. Ah, 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 ah. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and look at this day. And we had so much crap, and my trip's just made perfect. Mm -hmm. Big bass, nice lake trout on a six-weight rod. Yeah. Perfect. My my thinking is why he was here, it's just after ice out, and they're in feeding heavily before the water warms up too much, and then they'll head to back to deep water. So they're in here in the, in, in the shallows feeding, and... Colin got lucky and got one. That's that's great. Not luck. All skill. All skill. Okay. <laughs>
nice jump, is uh, the water temperature at the surface here is about 58, we found, so that means down there it's probably in the low 50s. But because it's a dark bottom out here in the deeper water, you know, we're in 8 to 12 feet, uh, it, we're seeing midges. We just saw a mayfly. Oh, there we go. Good man. Beautiful. <laughs> Good man. Like, do you know in most places that would be a trophy of a lifetime? And yeah. this is would be a, a, We consider this average. Average. Yeah, that's, that's an average fish. Whoa, 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 this is a big fish. So Bill, I did something that our good friend Phil Rowley taught us about the dangle. Look at yeah. this, oh, look at this fish. And uh, I was near the end of the retrieve, maybe had a rod length or so left, and I started lifting the fly up, but I kept tight to it. I didn't pull it out to make the next cast. And he, he ate right it on, on the, the way up. On the way up. I didn't see it. I just felt the weight. He followed it likely in the change of direction is what got him to hit. Yeah, might I be. think anyway. Well, you think it's trying to get, oh, that's a big fish, Bill. <laughs> I know they're all big fish, but that's a good one. This is a good one. This is a oh, time. Oh. Look at that. My goodness. Like how many of those have we had today? I know. And when they're this big, they, they I find they can't jump, you know, like the yeah. smaller ones do. They're too fat. They, they're, they're too fat. They're, they've been in, eating potato chips all winter. Look at this. This size of that fish. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh. <laughs> that is a big fish. That's, that's Look a at the girth of it. Look that, at the girth. That's six pounds. So they're really, really aggressive right now. Wow. That's so heavy. Oh. <laughs> it's outstanding. People. That, that's a trophy bass of a lifetime, and we're catching one after another. This is incredible. Nice cold water, revive well. <laughs> Man, you are putting on a clinic. I, I said it before, but you are putting on a clinic today. Well, that's because you're just sitting here having a snack and letting me catch some fish. Colin's having one of those fishing days. You know the ones that stay with you for the rest of your life? on it and see it. No, it's a bass. Fish. All right. Give me a yank, Bill. Yep. Two yanks. Oh, and it's a nice size bass. Really nice bass. Good stuff, Bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you bring him this way a bit, Bill? I'm trying to, but he's still green. Oh, my goodness. He's still really green. That is a giant bass, Bill. That is a monster. Oh, yeah. Okay. Move this way. I'm trying. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I'm going to lift his head. Bring him up. Can't see. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Bill. My goodness. That's six, seven pounds. Oh my. The size of that. <laughs> That's gotta be one of the biggest bass we've ever caught. Yeah, I would say that would go in the category of that. <laughs> oh my. I feel the weight of them. That was incredible. That was one of the biggest bass I ever got in my life. If you want big bass, pre-spawn is where you want to be. Just after ice out, it's the time to be here or late fall. The big fish are on the, on the feed then. Uh, they're not anywhere near spawning at all. They're still out in the deep. And boy, when you hit it right, you hit it right. You'll get your biggest bass of the, of the season here. I want to thank Big Basswood Resort for having us up here. And uh, 
Boy, we went from zero to hero, didn't we? <laughs> we sure did, Bill. We sure did. Zero to hero. We did it. <laughs> For more information on this show and others in this series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.